Hi, Ntiki. Hi, John. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Awesome, awesome. Look, I, I look at your career. You're a poet, you're a songwriter, you're a musician. I think it's a brilliant combo, if I may put it that way, because, I mean, these are the kind of careers that complement each other. Yes, and um, the beadwork. Yes. Yes. So, did it just happen, or did a lot go in there, or it was a case of, I've got a passion for this, and then soon you discover that, ah, I also like this. No, I think that um, as human beings, we're born whatever we are. Uh. So when I was 19, uh. um, I used to live near a bead shop. I used to walk past it. Uh. So um, I was a student. And then when my friends were still writing the exams, uh. I had a bit of time on my hands. So I uh. decided, OK, let me go to the bead shop and see uh. what I can do. Yeah. Then the bead work, while my friends were at school, uh. evolved completely. They came from writing exams. They were ordering beads, whatever, uh. so it grew into a business. Uh. So then there was the, 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 the teenage Nziki who was a closet poet yes. who would write and spend uh, breaks in the library reading poetry uh, with Sylvia Plath, you yeah. know? So there was that character in the back while I'm doing the beads. Uh. Then as life and evolution happens, uh the beads would lead me into spaces like open mic sessions yes. and creative spaces. Uh. That's where I saw the other children doing spoken word. Yes. And I was like, hey, I think that, that kinda, that's what I do, kind of. Oh my God, okay. Uh. So then I jumped onto the stage, it worked out, and then uh. I've also got a musical ear. Uh. So then I could merge with the bands and stuff. So all of it just kind of happens naturally, yeah. according to your own love. But it's just interesting how our early exposure to certain things when we're young have a huge influence on how, what we become yes. as we grow older, our choices and um, yes. the influences. You know, yes. do, do you feel that it was the case with you? Definitely. My parents, both my parents were writers, they were yes. journalists. So I grew, up, well, well, I grew up in a home. <laughs> and, <laughs> I your, and your family is about... <laughs> right. I mean, we I mean, are the media. Yeah. Right. Wow. So um, it is a very interesting, mm. one day they must really unpack the Mazwai family. And, I think so. Right? I think so. So I grew up in a home where they, my father had a study that was filled with books oh. and pan-Africanist books, you know. So names like Wachinua Achebe, Bongugi, Bobesi Head. Mm. I knew those names when I was in primary school, you know. Mm. Um, my dad also nurtured my reading mm. a lot. Um, I was just this nerdy girl who was always reading a book. So, Ongwanakokas? King Ongwanakokas. Pinville? Yes. Zone 7. Zone 7. Zone 7. Strata Sagitex, the one that separates <laughs> Zone 5 and Zone 7. Karaki Jigamoko Ning, short left. Yes, yes, okay. that's it. <laughs> so, uh, tell me more about your upbringing as someone who grew up Kokasi. You know, when yes. you, you become streetwise, when yes. you are brought up Kokasi, you, you know, and in, with you it's even worse because then not only were you Kokasi being exposed to the life of having to be streetwise, but also the books. Yes. Um, you know, yes. tell us more about that. Yeah. It's actually, I realize the older I get, I realize how privileged uh, we were um, in that we've got this academic and intellectual background that comes from our parents uh. and then we were in the middle of the hood uh. so the culture becomes part of you uh. well pinville uh. <laughs> i uh. feel bad because pinville is not zola yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know Yo, <laughs> there's too much sauce in there why why that emphasis is zola? no i just mean like <laughs> yeah <laughs> when we speak about the township, we like to just blanket everything, oh. and then you just think, Guti, <laughs> it's guns so, blazing, yeah. it's, it's, you yeah. know. Yeah. But there are pockets of the township that are quite affluent, I'm with you. and um, it's yeah. the privileged blacks, and mm. the. So there's also that dynamic mm. that we must talk about yeah. amongst black people the yes. classism yes. and just the mm. different layers of blackness still in the township. Yes. For me, how I engage with that is that I realized that I was a minority. Mm. And I realized that the only way I'm going to get 
anywhere mm. is if I know how to relate to the masses. Yes. These people that are called shady yeah. or, you know, like, more extra strong. Yeah. I knew that mm. that's the only way mm. that I'm going to survive. Because there's too few of you. There's, as a private school kid, there's too few of you. So yeah. it's not a relatable experience. Mm. So rather you walk to the other side and then you learn the ways of the streets. So yeah. for me, a lot... I, I, I've, I've been kind of being gangster and like picking up and, and, things and, as a starting. And I think that <laughs> makes you a, a very rare breed, if I may call it that, because with streetwise Bakasi, and then you're a scholar. Yes. Um, you, you completed your diploma in marketing. Yes. Um, maybe yes. before I talk about your exposure in universities, yes. maybe let's talk there. I mean, you completed a diploma in marketing. Yes. So what went through your mind and, you know, when you had to make a choice, you said, okay, maybe let me do marketing? You know, actually, initially, because you know how parents will be in denial mm. when you're just like, no, I'm an artist, guys. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to do the arts. <laughs> so my first job university, <laughs> mm. I was at this university and I did information systems. Mm. And I mean, that makes completely zero sense. As a result, I was never in class. Yeah. I just used to smoke weed on the lawns and just chill out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I was like, oh, well, Tata, you wanted to do this course. Yeah. Go do it. Be nice. Yeah. I said, I don't want to. Yeah. I want to be in acting or, mm. you know. Mm. Then when I didn't get the minimum requirements to get into second year, <laughs> oh. I had to really think yeah. about, okay, what do we want to do? What's mm. close to mm. a creative path? So it yes. was like, okay, advertising, marketing. Yeah. So then we did the marketing, but I'm really grateful for that journey because mm. as I'm sitting in the marketing class, as you're learning all the skills, whatever, I was like, oh, snap, mm. I just need a product. Yeah. I was like, okay, product place, what, what, I need to find my product. So it helped me. And the brand. Yeah. Mm. I hadn't reached there in my life yet, yes. but it was shaping my mind yes. as to how a product mm. works in a market yeah. and how to market a product, yeah. you know? Mm. So, um, I did that. Are we going to get to the master's as well? I, I'm going there. Oh, okay, I, cool. That's why I said you're a scholar. <laughs> because I'm thinking, okay, you started with marketing. Yes. And I was trying to marry the two. To then say, I, I also did other business courses okay. in the middle. Yeah. Like, hmm. somehow, how my spirit works hmm. is that it understands business hmm. and it understands art. Yes. And I'm trying to find a way to marry the two because... Hmm. What you find is that the artists are a little bit, we're the dumb kids in class, basically, yes. the ones who are playing in class. And then the business kids are a bit nerdy, yeah. but it's not as fun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so I think I'm mm. a merger yeah. of those two, and I'm trying to find ways because it's important for artists not to get exploited. I don't want to be exploited, but I want to be an artist. Yeah. So I'm just trying to find ways mm. to create my wealth mm. using my own talent. So you then enrolled for a master's uh, degree in yes. uh, creative writing? Yes, yes. Now, is that a defining moment of your life in terms of now saying, actually, I'm a poet, I'm a writer, yeah. and this is my theme? That was incredible. Um, you know, the poetry and the writer has been a journey. So there have been a lot of defining moments. I mm. mean, I started off in Fila Sister Spoken Word Collective, mm. um, where with other women, we catapulted poetry into the mainstream in yes. South Africa and we yes. made it so cool. Yes. And everybody was a spoken word artist. So mm. that was defining. Then I wrote my anthology of poetry in 2010. Mm. That was also like, oh, okay, we're doing this. Mm. So what's interesting about that is that I didn't realize I was on master's level. Mm. You know, we thought, oh, can Tiki must just go back to school. This art thing is not working out or whatever, you know. But you actually do your master's. <laughs> Kati, Kati, somebody in university is going to be like, hey, sweetie, yeah. do you want to come do this course? Because yeah. you actually qualify. Yes. You've been doing this thing. You've taken literature mm. to another level in this country. So yes. you've actually done your undergrad. Wow. Then it was like, oh, okay, cool. Then mm. I go to my master's and I get a scholarship. So mm. it kind of was like, okay, this is... This is me. This is what I do. Hmm. Um, my dream was always to take literature to the dance floor hmm. because I just felt like black people are always dancing and dancing, but can we also be clever? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> if you're going to be dancing, can you just be hearing some poetry going, still conscientizing you yeah. as you're drinking, you know? But, but that's the intellectual part, you know? So look, music, the dancing, that's entertainment. Yeah. But the minute you add poetry, then now yeah. you are tapping into the intellectual yes. side. Yes. Of, of, a, of a being. Yes. 
Because I think poets just have a different mind. We do you, fi do you find that people are uh, just finding it difficult to relate with the mind of a yes. poet? Yes. That when you speak or when you write, they focus on the choice of your choice of words. Yes. That they get so bogged down and they create a storm around the choice of words. Yes but they actually miss the bigger picture. Yes. Where is this person coming from? You see, that's exactly what's been happening with my Twitter account. Huh? <laughs> right? <laughs> Where I'm just like, guys, yeah. it's like this. And yeah. they're like, wow, ah, what did you say? Yeah. Then seven years later, they're like, oh, Flip, you know Ziki once said this. Do you remember yeah. that time Ziki said? <laughs> yeah. So it's been very fascinating having a gift that's not understood in the moment, but in hindsight yeah. every time. So yeah. it's very affirming. The older I get, I'm just like, okay, trust it. Even when people are fighting with you and even when people are angry at you, mm. wait a couple of years, mm. they're coming. So, you know, growing up, Kokasi, there was always this motto on Jihuri. Ah, street talk doesn't break any friendship. Yeah. I'm sure you've heard of that. Yes, yes. So what does that mean to you? <laughs> you guys always say that to me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't realize what trouble I'm causing. <laughs> Well, I, I didn't talk about travel. I just said straight talk doesn't break any whatever, friendship. Well, I've yeah. noticed my straight talk gets me into trouble, but <laughs> I, I really, it's not my intention. Yeah. I'll just be like, but guys, this thing is green, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't, and then everyone's yeah. like, what did she say? Yeah. Then I'm just like, oh, sorry, okay, flip. Okay, it's yellow then. Oh, flip. Yeah. You know, so. Actually, the flip side of that, now that you say that, there's that guy, I forget his name. The guy, he doesn't say anything. Yes. He's got such a big following. By not saying anything. I want to give my um, but, uh, one, of these, uh, yeah. one of these social media. Yes. It's, you know what? South Africans have mm. got a tendency to be shallow. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So the bad guys are getting to this stupid. Mm. So even if it's something you, it's, you can see this is wrong. Guys, mm. why are you doing this? Mm. Like there'll be a Twitter account that's vile and toxic and abusing people. Mm. But people will be excited for it. But you're like, guys, but this is wrong. Mm. You know this is wrong, right? Mm. Mm. Or they'll give platforms to maybe an alleged rapist or mm. a murderer. Mm. Where you're just like, so, guys, in other countries, you know this is not normal, right? Yeah. Where you're like, you can't create a platform for somebody who murdered somebody and then mm. just run with it. Mm. Like... Mm. <laughs> so South Africa's got moments where I'm just like, oh my word, this is some crazy, crazy. So I'm thinking now, here's Ntiki Mazwai, a scholar, a person who holds a master's degree in creative writing. She's a creative writer. Okay, and I'm not taking sides. I'm mm. simply saying you are, you are a creative writer. Yeah. And you say whatever you say, mm. whatever platform that you say, what you say. And then you get a lot of pushback and all that. Yeah. How are you dealing with that force where there's this opposition Yo. when you express yourself? Yes. And how does it impact you and, yes. as, and you as a brand? Yes. Or in terms of where you want to take your brand? Yes. You know, that's been quite a, a difficult journey uh. in that eventually I had to realize that I can't control how people perceive me uh. and how they treat me. Uh. So I had to learn how to look after my own mental wealth and mm. my own environment mm. to make sure that I'm happy and I'm cool. Mm. So I surround myself with people who love me. Mm. I surround myself with loving messages, whatever. Mm. Mm. But I can't control mm. the stuff that mainstream media has done with yeah. my name. Yes. It has affected me because mm. obviously it affects my work mm. when I've been painted a certain way. Mm. Where I'm like, no, but guys, I'm actually uh, an intelligent, academic, um, and quite sophisticated young woman. Uh. So this painting of this person who has got no brains, who just shoots from the hip, who is a hater, I'm just like, but you've made this up. You've uh. created this villain uh. to suit this narrative for yourselves, for drama, to uh. push your papers. Uh. But it has actually affected me, which is why I'm so glad about this, the Jacob Zuma trial with, uh. the, with the media, because it's important for the journalists to know that there's a line. Uh. You can't destroy people's names because you've got a platform and because we've got no, we, we don't have a platform to, to, to a right of reply. We don't have enough money to, uh. to get lawyers to protect uh. our names. Yeah. So it's been a difficult uh. journey, and I hope that media freedom in South Africa also takes into account dignity and mm. respect for African people. 
So how does that force impact your ability to generate income? I'm, it absolutely does. Because you know? mm. I mean, if I want to get a gig with Absa, then it's like, oh, but, oh, we've seen all this, your PR, you've got, and I'm mm. just like, no, mm. but that is not me. Mm. <laughs> That's the media. Yeah. So it does impact me, but the older I'm getting, yeah. I'm finding that mm. it's self-correcting okay. and people are coming back to their senses and yeah. Yeah. it actually becomes more of a blessing now yeah. Yeah. Um, that I'm getting older because people feel bad yeah. <laughs> then yeah. I take advantage of that. So, but in the national, I mean, that kind of force, mm. it does affect yeah. your ability to learn gigs, especially with yes. brands yes. because, you know, brands and commotion sometimes yes. Right or wrongly, yes. they just want to distance yes. themselves from somebody yes. where they feel that there's too much controversy yes. there. But you're saying, but over time, you are finding that the brand uh, managers or owners are starting to accept that, well, you know, there's this and there's that. I mean, I know of brands yeah. who thrive on making controversial adverts. I'm not going to mention yes. them. Yes. But, but somehow, yes. they still get... They still achieve the objective right. they want to achieve from a brand and marketing point of view. Yes. Which takes me to my next point. I, I don't recall seeing or having heard you ever having a nine to five. I know, what a blessing. Yeah. I've been getting chills. Mm. Such a blessing. I don't know how it works, mm. but, and I pray that it continues mm. in the same realm. I pray for more gigs. Yes. I pray for more blessings. I pray mm. for more opportunities. Mm. I hope to be that thing that teaches uh, people that you can be yourself uh, and somehow the universe is going to support you uh, financially yes. as long as you're being true and you're being your intentions, my, like my intentions are in the right place. Uh, so what is your biggest source of income I mean, between all these different they things all that you do? come together yeah. they all contribute mm. the gigs contribute the beadwork contributes the social media marketing contributes the mc gigs contribute mm. Mm. the music royalties contribute mm. so i've had to create multiple streams mm. with different elements of myself yeah and then get blesses also you know <laughs> on the side <laughs> I mean, I thought it was serious, but I won't go no, there. No, I'm joking. I will never do that. I will never do that. But I just, yeah. I get by, you know. I'm not wealthy and rich, mm. but I get by and yeah. I'm happy. So how does the money thing work in your life and in your world? In my world, um, money is something that loves and respects me. Mm. And it's something that I know, I was brought up by my grandmother. Mm. My mom died when I was young. Mm. So my grandmother used to have these envelopes, like electricity, oh, uh, transport. That. That's the, we call it the, the envelope method when it yes. comes to budgeting. Yes. Yes, yes. So she used the envelope method. Yes. So even to this day, mm. my budget, my monthly budget, I don't go past it. Yeah. I just know that, okay, Nsiki, you need to pay mm. this, 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 this. It all adds up to this amount. And mm. once I've kept that amount every month, then I sit down and I calm down mm. and then I'll eat off if little gigs come in, a beadwork order comes in, then mm. I'll eat off that. Yeah. But from my main account, mm. only, let's say, 10,000 yeah. comes out every month. The yeah. rest I must go and hustle. So, you know, one of the biggest challenges for, for artists like yourself mm. is because there's no nine to five, you actually are your own boss. Yes. You decide how you direct your traffic around your money. And very often, you know, for as long as you, are, you remain popular and you continue to be relevant to your yes. market, you make money. Yes. But, but the reality is you're not getting younger and your body will start giving a signal that you can't yeah. do this forever. Yeah. And as a result, things like preparing for retirement is a foreign concept for, to artists. I mean, you have... Yeah, we don't people, have retirement annuities. Yeah. We, we don't have saving plans. Yeah. So what comes to your mind when that, you know, when that thought comes to say, hey, Pella, I can't do this forever. At some Anxiety point. Anxiety comes to my mind. Then mm. I'm just like, yo, Nziki, mm. you're going to have to relate to the youth in a way that's going to keep you employed. Yeah. I'm going to have to be those grannies that the aunts, that mm. the kids are calling to be like, oh, Granny mm. Ziki, please come talk to us about this. You know, yeah. that's the nice thing also about being an artist is that yeah. you don't. Mm. You can't do it for, until you're old. Yeah. So, but it stresses me. Things mm. like this stress me. I get a lot of anxiety. We can't 
uh, get bonds mm. because we don't have pay slips. Yeah. I try to buy a house once, it's impossible. Nah. So. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. Now, you know, and uh, because I think there's that thinking that, well, as a freelancer, you can't get you can't get a bond because you don't have a pay slip. But technically, technically, if all your gigs are executed through a, an entity, a legal entity, mm. and there's invoicing, mm. this legal entity is the one that hires you. Mm. You with me? And not only does it hire you, it's the same entity that gives you an, mm. an invoice. And it's backed by your bank statement. So honestly speaking, if you've got that, where this mm. entity keeps... So in other words, even if you make... There's some gigs where you get a breakthrough uh, uh, and you've got mm. lump sum, but it stays in this gig. But mm. it also helps with um, uh, dealing with the issues of tax. Mm. Because the money is not taxed in your hands. Mm. It will be taxed in the hands of the business, provided mm. the business uh, has to declare... Um, the financials for the year yeah. and all that, and it seeds a certain turnover and all that. But honestly speaking, it's not impossible. It's true. What you're saying is so absolutely true. Yeah. And if you're not, the thing is, my brain, and I always like say this, I'm always like, please, can I be given a partner uh, whose brain works the opposite of mine? Uh, because I'm a creative. Yes. And my, my, my way of thinking is not linear. Yeah. So I do need somebody who's the opposite of me yes. to be like, okay, set up your business like this. Do your admin like this. Yes. I can be brilliant creatively. Yes. yes. But yeah. in terms of admin and doing things properly by the book, I'm very, yeah. I'm I mean, poor at that. The reality is that you can't be a jack of all trades. Um, well, others might say they've got that lack of being a, a jack of all trades. But the reality is, like you say, I mean, just partnering with the right I would got, love um, you. you know I can't I mean? wait till I'm blessed with that yeah. person who's just like, okay, let's monetize this and take as white thing. Yes. Right. Put yes. this here. Put this chess move here. Put mm. the, you know, I'd love that. Yeah. I think, would you say that's the part that's missing maybe for a lot of artists? Because, I mean, you just need somebody who says, focus on your, on your, on your art. Yep. Right? On your trade. I'll do your and, business. And let me do your, let me manage you as a business. Um, Yes. So in that way, I mean, there's longevity there because... I would love that. Yeah. I would love that. So let's talk about success. I mean, people define success in different ways. What does success mean to you? How do you define success? My definition of success is, wow, just not having anxiety about money. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But then the, you, still have, like, you still have people who've got money, but they're still anxious. So About money. Yeah, well... I guess I don't want anxiety about money. I yeah. don't want to be like, "Ish, where's my next paycheck?" Is if that is covered, even yeah. if it's five thousand a month, yeah. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. My bills are paid. Let me go travel. Let me go play. Mm. You know. Yeah. So, in your world, and you know, in your entire journey, what are some of your biggest money lessons? So, as a small business owner, the importance of cash flow and how it can affect your business. Mm. So I've had to learn the importance of like the deposit because mm. um, that affects your business cash flow. Mm. Like I said before, budgeting, mm. the importance of budgeting and saving mm. because money is like water. It can just flow out, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So if you don't have systems mm. in place yourself mm. to stop that flow of money, what I think I'm good at uh, is that I know how to make money last. Mm. I know how to be disciplined with money. Yeah. So I suppose that that's, I don't know if I learned that, but, or it just always was that way. But I do, I'm like, okay, this is going here, this is going, okay, I put this here. So I know how to, I don't get excited over money and just go crazy. Yeah. That's not me at all. Mm. I just don't do debt. Yeah. I've never taken out loans. Mm. I don't believe in credit cards and the, well now I've got but I'm going to go cancel it. <laughs> <laughs> what made you change your mind? You know, I think it's because I was like, oh, when you travel, you need to hire a car. Mm. You know, then I realized that no man, I'm always traveling in my own car and I'm yeah. always road tripping. Mm. So now I'm just like, no, actually, this credit card is just taking money out of my account every month and I, I don't need it. Mm. 
So I don't believe in debt. I don't believe in loans. Mm. If I don't have money, mm. if I can't afford something, I mm. don't buy it. Mm. Um, I don't believe in big expensive cars. Mm. <laughs> Definitely mm. not. Mm. I would rather put more money in the place I live mm. than in the car. Mm. Just to always um, have good, pure energy towards it and not be... Mm. The scarcity consciousness mm. is very problematic to your money, mm. well, for me. So I always make sure that I have to keep myself relaxed mm. and um, mentally chilled. Even if I see there's no money and I'm, oh my God, oh my God. Mm. I have to make sure that, okay, Nziki, work on yourself mm. so that your, the vibration you're giving out mm. is not pushing money away. Yeah. So just being conscious of mm. being attractive to money and, you know. Okay. Finally, yes. what has been your best financial decision ever no it's still not, not taking out loans yeah it's still because yeah i have a big sister that once um told me never to take out a loan because she was like the interest rates whatever mm. i didn't even understand what she was saying because she said mm. when i was a teenager she was mm. she's much older she's like 10 years older than me mm. so I, I just know okay don't take out loans mm. it's time like i said don't take out loans mm. so i don't take out loans mm. i don't believe in that mm. and i will not i want to tell the girls this mm. girls must stop taking out debt for their boyfriends mm. and buying cars or whatever stop mm. stop mm. stop ladies stop mm. um it's irresponsible and don't also expect somebody to take out loans in their name mm. for you Ish. everybody handle your own debt yeah it's rubbish, this thing where people must take out. Because when the relationship breaks down, yeah. the one person is stuck with the bills. Yes. So just that one thing, mm. please, can you guys stop taking out loans for each other? It's mm. not okay. Huh. Mm. Interesting. Uh, Thank you, John. Thank you so much. You've been such a wonderful guest. Thank you, John. Um, <laughs> you, you remain who you are, unaltered, um, uninfluenced. And I think continue being the rock that you are. Thank and, you. Uh, and all the best for your future. Thank you, John Valley Gates. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs>